opinion, this is not a fixer upper, is it? Move in, in ready. Opinion, that is not a fixer upper. Sir, this is move in ready luxury, isn't it? In a heritage yeah. building. Everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey gang, what's up? Just Aaron right here, Canadian Looney. So we've got three of our favorites here in this crazy video. We have Larry Brock, we have Mike Barrett, and Stephanie Cousy. Not in that order necessarily. We're gonna kick it off with Mike Barrett, jump into Larry Brock, and then Stephanie Cousy, who you will appreciate. I assure you, she's fun to watch in committee. This investigation into the condo in on Billionaire's Row in New York that the Liberals purchased seem to be cutting corners, abusing policy. That's the way it seems. And the questions that we want answered as Canadians are being asked by these Conservatives. There are some Liberals like uh, Pam Damoff that are going to try to step in the way. I don't think these Conservatives are going to be held back by old Pam Damoff, bag of wind. Anyhow, Let's get into it. Let's check out Mike Barrett, then Larry Brock, then Stephanie Cousy. This is very interesting. Are they mishandling our tax dollars? It would seem so. Let's take a look and a listen to these three light up the liberal transaction on this $9 million condo on Billionaire's Row in Manhattan. It's ridiculous. Let's take a look and a listen. Also, these witnesses still don't seem prepared. It's weird. Let's take a look. Let's go. Mike Barrett, you're up. Uh, Mr. Barrett, please go ahead, sir. I appreciate your comments at the opening of the meeting. It's uh, interesting to hear that we've had a change of heart by, uh, by Justin Trudeau's $9 million man, Tom Clark, and that he is uh, now, after having previously said he would appear, and then saying he wouldn't appear, and then saying that he was on leave, and then when his office was contacted by media, um, they were told that he was, in fact, in office, uh, now saying that he is willing to meet. So we have very disingenuous, at best, at best um, responses from, from Mr. Clark. It, it raises all kinds of questions about um, who the direction came from for Mr. Clark not to appear as he had originally committed to this week. And... Um, this is, you know, of course, in the context of a $9 million uh, residence on Billionaire's Row that is going to serve one person and duplicate existing space that, are, that, that the Office of uh, Canada's Representative in New York already has. And uh, we heard from Trudeau government officials last week that they were incredibly proud of the $9 million uh, Billionaire's Row accommodations that they got for, for Justin Trudeau's pal, um, and said they never it never occurred to them. It never occurred to them that it would be optically uh, bad to spend $9 million on a place on Billionaire's Row for a member of the liberal elite, which I think that response, they're, they're, um, they're uh, being unaware how out of touch this was, says everything you need to know of after nine years of Justin Trudeau and his uh, NDP Liberal government. Mr. Clark had agreed to come to be here today, and he, uh, he backed out, and now he's saying he will come on one of those dates. I will say, Chair, that um, let's preempt the conversation we'll have on the date that's selected, that if Mr. Clark doesn't come on that date, that he'll have exhausted every reasonable courtesy that this committee could extend him, and that as the motion did pass unanimously for him to be here, that um, he must be summoned because he will be in defiance of, um, he'll be in defiance of this committee's wishes, uh, its unanimous wish, and of course um, will have demonstrated himself to again um, not tell the truth, uh, just like he did yesterday when he said he was on leave, but in fact uh, was not. So uh, we'll we'll wait and see. Uh, but it's clear that this is an effort uh, by the government to to try and uh, delay and distract from this latest nine million dollar scandal. So uh, I have a question uh, for um, for our witnesses. Um, in as brief a, an answer as possible, um, is. 
Midtown East uh, appropriate for representational space for a G20 country in your estimation? Uh, <clears throat> hi, uh, thank you for the question. I uh, the the quick answer is uh, yes. It is about ninety five percent of the consulates in New York City are located in this neighborhood or uh, just a, abutting this neighborhood. Um, uh, there's about one hundred and thirty six consulates, and all but seven are located there. And uh, and to the other witness, sir, do you agree? Yes, I agree 100%. Uh, the Midtown East and the Midtown Corridor in general, uh, all of the examples we mentioned earlier in our opening remarks are based in that area within about 15 minutes from uh, the UN. Okay, and just, and just for my understanding, um, 466 Lexington Avenue is in, is in that area? Just a, an, aud right. an audible yes would be or no. You, you indicated yes, sir? That is correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's where uh, the, the Consulate General of Canada in New York is located, is there. And so um, when we talk about the, the space that, uh, that G20 and G7 countries um, have, uh, we have space there. We have it in that key space. We have space that in 2018, the government of Canada, um, uh, financed by, by the taxes of Canadians, paid for upgraded space, representational space, meeting space, space um, where meals could be served, events could be held, and meetings could be had um, at that address, at, at that address at, at 466 Lexington Avenue on the 20th floor. But what we have now is a $9 million condo, uh, and that condo um, is supposed to replace uh, another condo that that um, the government of Canada had procured. So my question is, what increased value will Canadian taxpayers get by having a a a, a duplicate, having a second location um, that's in a desirable neighborhood? Obviously, uh, other countries are are spending um, big big sums of money. Um, I'm not accountable to their taxpayers. I'm accountable to Canadians, as is as is this Liberal government. What is the increased value that we get by having a second space? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, while I can't speak to the uh, value of a second space versus a first space, it is my understanding that there is a an office space and a residence space, and that the residence space generally has a um, um, facilities requirement as well to be performing as a mission asset. And so needing that space sounds like the right choice for the government of Canada. Uh, the initial... Just, just quickly, sir, what was, your, what was your commission on this sale? Just the okay. number, if you could. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the question. The commission was pre-negotiated as part of the RFP process with the government of Canada. And what was the number, sir? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. The commission that is uh, received by uh, agents during any sales process is always received by the selling party not by the buyer's side. So the seller's party paid out a commission of 4% of the transactional value to our firm. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Uh... Oof, one of the worst Pam Damoff is coming up right after Larry Brock, who's one of the best. But uh, Pam Damoff, we won't show much, but she just deflates any conversation. That's what the liberals do. Suck the air out or blow the bag full, like, uh. And they still have not gone back to us, so I'm glad you've brought it up with Global Affairs. If you are watching this today, and I, I assume you have, you owe us those documents, you promised us those documents, or at least a response about it. So I hope you will uh, get to providing it to uh, this valued committee. Thank you for that paid announcement, or time for the paid announcement. Mr. Brock, uh, go ahead, please. Thank you, Chair. And uh, I'm going to be directing questions uh, to you, uh, Mr. Abo, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, I understand that your real estate firm is currently the listing agent of 550 Park Avenue, Unit 12E, the existing Consul General um, uh, uh, premises. And I also understand that you played a part in the purchase of uh, 57th Street. Is that accurate? 
Thank you for the question. Uh, that is indeed accurate. We proceeded uh, in two RFP processes, uh, one for the uh, uh, purchase of the new official residence and one for the disposal of existing residents. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to confirm that. Now, uh, Government of Canada officials, uh, Justin Trudeau's government, uh, Global Affairs, have confirmed that the purchase of West 57 was predicated on the fact that the Park Avenue property required, in essence, over $2 million in renovations that it was originally purchased in 1961, it had uh, renovations completed in 1982, and uh, it was good enough for 19 previous council generals, except for Tom Clark, who uh, wanted a different location, and uh, was granted that. Now, I think it's disingenuous, and I think it's actually a lie to Canadians when Justin Trudeau and his government are claiming that this property was essentially a fixer-upper. I think that could be the furthest from the truth, and I'm going to quote from your listing page for Park Avenue. A perfect example of the grand golden age apartments of the 1920s. This masterpiece is full of volume, scale, and ideal circulation. A great room with 11-foot ceilings and large windows that frame exposures to the north and east invite you into the heart of the home, while the adjacent dining room could comfortably host down a dinner of 18. Designed for hospitality, a commercial kitchen and a butler's pantry are further complemented by direct access to a separate staff office and storage room, as well as in-unit laundry, a den library just off the entrance gallery, as well as a powder room complete the northern wing. Along the southern corridor, four bedrooms, all with ensuite bathrooms and walk-in closets, and two with corner exposures, offer privacy and comfort. With its high ceilings, large windows, herringbone, walnut floors, and ample storage through Throughout, this residence offers the perfect framework for generation living and is truly a space to behold. That, sir, is your listing. That is hardly indicative of a New York City condo adjacent to Billionaire's Row that demands $2 million worth of renovations. Would you agree with that? Thank you for the question. Um, it is a wonderful residence, and it will serve its owners very well uh, that has the needs that that residence will offer up. If those needs are no longer met, those residents will probably want to find a In your professional opinion, this is not a fixer-upper, is it? Move in, in ready. Opinion, that is not a fixer-upper. Sir, this is move-in ready luxury. Isn't it? In a heritage uh, building. It is move in ready. Uh, it's a wonderful residence. It's in a heritage building. That is correct. correct. Now, did the government offer you any specifics on how they were going to spend $2 million worth of taxpayer dollars for renovations to Park Avenue? Did they offer any details? We have not received any of that information. Of course not. Did they even mention it to you, that one of the rationales for looking for a new location to adjacent to Central Park in Billionaire's Row was because of the $2 million expected to renovate this luxurious condo? It was shared as part of the criteria, yes. They, they, they shared that with you? They shared that due renovation costs, they, uh, it made more sense financially to pursue right. another residence. Okay. They also told us at committee that it wasn't accessible. And when I drilled down on the government as to what that meant, they had to widen the entranceway to a bathroom. That could have easily been done on Park Avenue as well, couldn't it? It is sometimes difficult to do work in co-op buildings especially. Uh, part of the reason well, is why it, the sir? cost is so high. It's not impossible, it is it? Could be done. It's not impossible, no, is it? That Answer, please. It is not impossible. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Bach. Uh, Ms. Damoff, welcome to OGO. Go ahead, please, for five. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair, and it's a pleasure to, to be with you here today. Um, 
I want to read something from the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations from 1963. And one of the articles says that the role is to further the development of commercial, economic, cultural, and scientific relations between the sending state and the receiving state and otherwise... Either witness. Do either of the witnesses have knowledge as where to where the current Canadian representative to the United Nations resides? I can answer that question. I do have knowledge. Please go ahead. Should I share where he resides? Okay. Is that public information? I'm not sure if... Uh... <laughs> well, I, if, if it's the same information that I have, it's that he currently resides in the Park Avenue residence of the former, uh, the, the former residence of the same building of the former uh, residence of the Consul General. So uh, this is my understanding, and this is my understanding that it is, uh, and I'm seeing you nod, so that it seems to be you're in agreement that you are. So it's very interesting to me. Um, does the current Canadian representative to the United Nations have any plans to, to sell this resident, to, to leave this building and find another residence? Are you aware Thank of that? You the question. I, I believe that's a uh, answer best uh, provided by Global Affairs. Uh, I am not aware of a current plan to, sp to dispose of it. Interesting. It's just very interesting to me that this previous residence was not good enough for the Consul General, yet somehow it remains good enough for the Canadian representative to the United Nations. There just seems to be some type of disconnect there that this residence was good enough for uh, one Canadian representative in NYC, but not good enough for the Consul General. Very interesting. Mr. Chair, I'm just going to summarize in saying how very disappointed I am in this government to see value for money for Canadians comparative to the previous Harper government. The previous Harper government sold the Dublin residence for $10 million. We sold the entire Hong Kong mission for $86 million in 2016. We sold McDonald House for $530 million above. This was above ask, ask, asking price, unifying two buildings in purchasing the house next to Canada House for a savings of $250 million. And finally, Mr. Chair, I'll note that we listed our Coral Gables, the official residence in Miami, a residence I have visited, for $5.2 million. In closing, Mr. Chair, I'll say... Under the previous administration, the Harper government, we sold more than 80 diplomatic properties for more than $720 million. This is the type of value for money that Canadians deserve, and Liberals should come to understand this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Cousy. Everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey gang, so we're going to wrap it up right there. Which one of those three are your favorite? Mike Barrett is a badger. Larry Brock is the man. And Stephanie Cousy is the woman. So we'll have to wait and see what you guys think about uh, those three conservative MPs that are fighting for the answers that Canadians want to questions they're asking in the House of Commons and in committee. What is going on in our country, guys? Who knows? My name's Aaron. What do you think about a $9 million condo that is unnecessarily being purchased with your tax dollars? They say it's an investment. Ah, hard to say. Leave a comment, please. Like, subscribe, share, get notified. Thank you for watching this video. We'll catch you in the next one. Ciao for now.